The Nigerian government spends trillions of naira yearly on payment of subsidy on petroleum products. It has repeatedly tried to cut off the payment in favor of market-determined prices. It argues that the huge amount will be used to fund critical projects, a position backed by the International Monetary Fund, IMF. But many Nigerians want the government to keep fuel costs low as the only benefit they receive from the country's oil wealth. Ahead of the target date of mid-2022 for the complete elimination of fuel subsidies, the federal government says they are working with other partners on measures to cushion potential negative impact of the removal of the subsidies on the most vulnerable at the bottom 40% of the population. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed said the federal government will remove fuel subsidy and replace it with a monthly stipend of 5,000 Naira transport grant to poor Nigerians and that the available resources after the removal of fuel subsidy will determine the number of beneficiaries. She also maintained that the transport grant will target about 30 to 40 million Nigerians who make up the poorest population of the country. On this edition of Nigeria Today, we shall be looking at issues around fuel subsidy removal and its impact on the economy and populace. Thank you for joining us. I am Lydia Odije Ochi. Welcome back. And to discuss fuel subsidy removal is an energy expert and CEO, New Hampshire Group, Odion Omofoma. You're welcome to the program. Good evening, Nigerians. Thank you for having me on your show. Also in the studio is our regular face, public affairs analyst, Jide Ojo. You're always a delight in our studios. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure, Lydia. Okay. Good evening, Nigerians. Okay, let me begin with Odion. Fuel subsidy is back in the news again, and a lot of people would like to know how it will affect them and the Nigerian economy. Okay, um, I think the fuel subsidy has been a very topical issue for Nigerians for a long while because a lot of Nigerians think that's the only benefit they get from our oil resources. Uh, but what we call fuel is really petrol because there's diesel, there's kerosene, there's aviation fuel as well. And every all that fuels have been deregulated. It's just petrol that is, uh, that is uh, subsidized uh, in, that, uh, by, uh, in some form. Now, in terms of how the removal of subsidy on petrol will affect Nigerians, clearly the first impact is the cost of transportation, public transportation, and the cost of you coming to the offices, uh, coming to your office. Petrol prices, I think the London prices are above 300 naira per litre now. So you can imagine removing that uh, uh, subsidy and the impact it would have uh, uh, on your take-home at the end of the month. So that would naturally lead to inflation. We project at least a 2 to 3% rise in inflation by just removing petrol subsidies alone, right? But um, there's also, the, on the benefit side, the monies that are being spent on subsidizing petrol for millions of uh, transport, uh, Nigerians can now be plowed into other things, particularly the capital projects that we need, our roads, infrastructure, uh, schools, public health care, universities. You know. So uh, on one side, inflation will rise and hopefully would be would taper down later on. And then uh, we expect that the savings from uh, the subsidy, uh, unspent subsidy, will be channeled properly into other areas of our economy that really need it. It's okay. Now, Jide. What really is fuel subsidy removal? Thank you. Um, <laughs> fuel subsidy removal crept into our lexicon under Ibrahim Babangida's administration in the early 90s, around 1993 or thereabout. And it was meant to be an interim measure uh, while the turnaround maintenance is done on the four refineries that we have. Uh, in fact, as at that time, I think the projection was that um, there will be subsidy for like six months, 
while the turnaround maintenance on uh, Wari, Port Harcourt, and Kaduna refineries get underway. Unfortunately, this first subsidy has become the only port of very few fat cats. Uh, very few individuals now preferred that our refineries does not work. And because they have license to import fuel from Europe and Asia, uh, they, they make quick money through that. Because as of that time, uh, we have uh, Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Agency, PPPRA. Uh, there is Petroleum Equalization Fund. And we have seen this fraud that is um, uh, built into this subsidy regime, which makes me to be very vehemently opposed to this first subsidy. Because even though it is meant to cushion the effect of price volatility between the crude oil export price and the cost of refinery, uh, refining this product abroad and bringing them back to Nigeria, you now discover that, one, it has become an endless uh, uh, drain pipe uh, for some few individuals who are well connected to get license to import this fuel. We have seen the fraud in the subsidy regime arising from some of the uh, even investigations and public inquiry that have been conducted. Uh, what, the most significant one being the Farouk Lawan uh, Committee of House of Reps some years ago, about 2012. Uh, although it ended up uh, being corrupted. But um, while I agree with my brother here that in the, in, the, in, the, in the initial instance, it might lead to inflation, I know that government of Babuari has been very cautious uh, in removing this subsidy for a very good reason. First, if you listen to, if you read the text of uh, Minister of Finance yesterday, she was actually, uh, the, the plan is that this subsidy will be removed at a point in time that uh, Dangote refineries, which is under construction, will have come on stream. And uh, that is expected to come on stream by first quarter of 2022. Mm -hmm. There are also modular refineries, three of them, that are also expected to come on stream. Then there's 1.5 billion that have been invested in Portaco refinery to also uh, turn around that refinery to make it productive. So what I'm saying invariably is that once all of these measures are in place, if uh, all things being equal, as he said in economics, you then see that there will be no need to import fuel. And once you don't import, all this issue of landing cost, uh, demorage, and all of that will be removed. You will not be talking of trucking or you know, cost of transportation within the country. And that definitely will bring down the price because you then don't need foreign exchange mm -hmm. to bring in any of these refined petroleum products. Okay. We really look forward to those days. Now, according to the GMD, that I'm, I'm talking to Mr. Dion now, uh, NNPC, Melekari, fuel price will range between 320 naira and 340 naira after subsidy removal. Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of this? Well, let me start with the disadvantage, which I mentioned. Uh, the cost of transporting yourself suddenly doubles because fuel prices are now 160 to 165. So you're talking about a 100% increase. So, and that 100% increase in transportation would affect your food, affect other things that uh, uh, even have no relation to fuel. For instance, even rents will go up. It's at the disadvantage. On the advantage side, the question is, Who's paying for that differential? Somebody's paying. And guess what? You're also paying for it. You don't know, but you're paying for it because the monies that should have gone into building our infrastructure or even paying salaries on time, paying pensions, are now going into this. And guess what? We're having to borrow. So on the advantage side, perhaps it would reduce our borrowing. Uh, there will be a lot more money for the federation account to share to both the federal and state governments and local governments. Um, hopefully, we would see an improvement in, or we'll see a lot more dedication of uh, capital to uh, capital infrastructure projects, right? And lastly, I think it's time we move to a point where we buy petrol without government having to set prices. Currently, they don't set prices on kerosene. 
people are buying kerosene. They don't set price on uh, liquefied uh, uh, LPG. We're buying LPG, even though the price is now sky high. But we're buying a market price. So we cannot have a situation where petrol is the only fuel where government decides to set a price. And in setting that price, we're all harming ourselves. In other words, uh, we're happy to buy fuel at very low cost. Meanwhile, this fuel is going to Cameroon, Ghana, sorry, not Ghana, um, uh, Benin Republic and others at our own detriment. Our roads are bad. So I think we need to weigh these things, weigh the advantage, the disadvantage, which will be huge in terms of inflation, but also weigh the benefits, which is that we then have more monies to buy. We're a lot more conservative in our fuel use and optimal as well in our fuel use. You know, and then we have more savings for us to build our economy and reduce our debt borrowing that we currently see. Okay, Mr. Joe, how would you react to his uh, suggestion? Yeah, it's on point. But in addition, uh, I want to take it. I want to make a write down what he said about um, government pulling off. I mean, with the coming into effect of Petroleum Industry Act, uh, government actually should have fully deregulated. Uh, the PMS, which is Petroleum uh, yeah. Motor Spirit. The reason, simply, Lydia, the reason is that it is, it is, it is riddled with corruption. Mm. It is riddled with corruption. I mean, nobody, only very handful people are at an advantage. Let's not be afraid of the rising cost of utility. Definitely the price will rise. Whether you keep the subsidy, even now that they have they kept the subsidy, Prices of goods and commodities are rising. So it's better to remove this corruption, allow the market, market forces to drive the price. Somebody will say, oh, how patriotic are you? Let me learn on this. Look, first, there is no reason why price of PMS should be equal across the country. Why should Abuja buy PMS at the same price that Lagos will buy it? Lagos is next, I mean, Apapao is, is in Lagos. That's where the takeoff point of all the trucking to the interland takes place. If you are coming to Abuja from Lagos, will you pay the same price as if you are coming from Lokoja to no, Abuja? No. So why must somebody buy the uh, uh, PMS at 162 in Lagos and buy it in Karan Namuda or in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Patakot at the same price. Because even transportation, simple economics about transportation has shown that the longer the distance, the higher the price you pay for your transportation. So why are we capping it? The reason, you see, when you cap, and I need to point this out, when you cap uh, the price, you are chasing away investors because they cannot charge cost recovery uh, price. And if they cannot charge cost recovery price, they will not invest. That is why about 18 of them that were licensed over 10 years ago have not dared to build any of the refineries. But when you allow the market prices to determine the cost of PMS, as Dangote is taking off, as the one in Bini, the one in Oweri, the one in uh, where uh, there, there are three places where modular refinery has taken, as the government finishes, you will find that that it's like what happened in telecommunication uh, sector, where initial uh, licensee were telling us we cannot do per second billing. And another uh, operator came and said, look, I'm starting from the one with per second billing. Mm -hmm. that, that competition, mm -hmm. the fact that government has allowed price, price um, cost re reflective pricing will engender investment a lot of investment. Operate. I will even I, I even foresee a situation where the uh, IOC, international oil companies, will even bid to get license to operate refineries in Nigeria because it will not be a very thriving business for them. But situations where you are paying subsidy, many of these subsidies are not paid as at when due, even the genuine ones. It takes years. I mean, there was a time that um, uh, independent marketers said they don't even have forex to import fuel. So, they, and because government is showing them so much, th these have given rise to restiveness in the uh, downstream uh, petroleum sector. So, it is in our enlightened best interest. Let's suffer in the interim, in the immediate period, but along the time, 
six months, one year down the line, you will see that competition will drive down the price. And even from this 360 or 340 that is being proposed, you may see that at the end of 2022, the price of, price of PMS we'll may come even down. come down to 120 or 100 naira. Amen to that. <laughs> Very interesting. Let's take a break and I'll be back to talk more on our topic. Don't go away. This is NTA News 24, broadcasting from Abuja. You can watch us anywhere, anytime, on the following platforms. For more information, log on to our website, www.nta.ng, or join us on our social media handles, Facebook at NTA News 24. For comments, suggestions and inquiries, send an email to news24 at nta.gov.ng or call us on the following numbers. NTA, NTA News 24, news and more news. Welcome back. The program is Nigeria Today and our guests are still with us. Let me begin with you, Mr. Odion. Is there going to be fuel scarcity or will it stop panic buying by motorists as we have noted in recent times? Well, you know, when, there's, when there are rumors of uh, fuel subsidy removal, the panic buying starts. Mm -hmm. So uh, government may need to act swiftly or reassure the public as to the timeline it will take to remove the fuel subsidy. Uh, I think the projection is uh, February next year. I'm not too sure again the timeline, but clearly from next year, at some point, the government will have to remove it. But my worry is that next year is also political year, right? And you find out that so subsidy issues are very political because people think that because of the suffering it will inflict, people are very careful. Politicians are also extremely mindful when it comes to pulling uh, subsidies or making the market more uh, petrol prices more market driven. So my concern and worry is that whilst their their pronouncements to the fact that mid 2022 subsidies will leave, I'm also mindful that next year campaigns for 2023 start and that might that might torpedo or delay the subsidy removal. My colleague uh, uh, Federal Panel just mentioned the Dangote refinery as well. The reality is that at the end of the day, if we do not have local, significant local uh, uh, production, uh, we might end up being at the negative side of it. In the, even in the interim, inflation might spike. And depending on how fast inflation, inflation spikes, then politicians might pull back and say, okay, let's, let's remedy the whole situation. You know, so I, I'm very wary of the fact that uh, when we're entering an election year, subsidy is very topical. Uh, will the government have the nerve, the spine, to say we're going ahead with this plan to remove it and hope that uh, whatever things that they put on ground to ameliorate the pain is effectively channeled? Okay, talking about plans to ameliorate the pains of the poor, especially the poor. Mr. Ajide, the federal government says there will be a monthly 5,000 Naira transport grant to poor Nigerians after subsidy removal. How realistic is this? Uh, you are making me to play the role of Nostradamus, the man who saw tomorrow. I'm not, I'm not one, but let me say, uh, my prognosis is that, um, yes, it's a welcome idea, welcome development, provided that the, it will be transparently uh, and done in an accountable manner. Uh, because this kind of money, though it looks so small, 5,000, uh, Look at the controversies around the conditional cash transfer uh, contrary, uh, currently being done under the uh, uh, social investment program. How prone, how people have been very critical of it that this conditional cash transfer, uh, you know, there is a lot of opacity in it. Uh, why do you have to pay people by cash? Why can't you transmit, uh, uh, send the money to their accounts in, in a way that everybody can verify it? And we are talking of 30 to 40 million beneficiaries. And what is not clear to me at this point is that with those people who are already on the social register now, who are benefiting under the conditional cash transfer, uh, will they still be in a position to benefit under the transport subsidy? 
uh, transport, uh, what do they call it? Is it subsidy or transport support? Uh, 5,000 Naira. And how do you compile that list of 30 to 40 million Nigeria that it will not still be padded with people who can afford this? Mm -hmm. Because we've seen situations, uh, Lydia, we've seen situations where scholarships are being offered to people who could even afford to pay for this education. The same way, many of us, like my guy here, he may still find his name being on the list of <laughs> beneficiary. Whereas he doesn't need it. He should even donate to government to say, I'm even supporting government with 100 people. I will be giving 55,000 every month. But you see, people are going to manage this. And we need to see through the compilation of that list so that everybody will know that it is the poorest oh. of the poor that they said will benefit that are actually benefit. But then, how long can government give this, mm. this money? Uh, is it going to be forever? Is it going to be for a period of six months, for one year? Because, I mean, let's do something in a sustainable manner. Is it sustainable in the first place? Does get, getting 5000 naira every month, does this alleviate your poverty in the true sense of mm -hmm. it? I don't think so. There are things, there are other things I believe that government can do that will ameliorate people's suffering. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you give people or, or opportunity to uh, get a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, you bring that, you subsidize certain uh, things that will be beneficial to them, maybe their businesses and all okay. of that. I think that would be more impactful okay. than just giving cash to people and uh, cash, this cash ending up being given to people, the wrong people. who can even afford not to not to get paid. Okay, Mr. Odion, and you know, Mr. Jide is uh, suggesting you actually donate to some poor Nigerians. <laughs> well, that's on the light side. Yes, he's talked about uh, doing something else. So, what else, in your opinion, should be done by the government to reduce the impact of the fuel subsidy removal come 2022? Well, at the end of the day, think about it. Um, you. You can buy buses for people. We've done that in the past. Uh, we knew where that ended. You can do uh, Shopee. We had Shopee before, and we knew where Shopee landed us when fuel prices were moved. I'm sure you remember Shopee. We've had all forms of intervention, and this is the first time I think the government says, okay, we have been doing a social, prote uh, social protection scheme. Let's keep that. Let's replicate that. Uh, it is unfortunately our nature for us to doubt issues like this because of our past and who, whom we seem to be. Uh, but at the end of the day, there will be people who require that 5,000 naira. It may not be the best way to bring them out of poverty, unfortunately. But I think what government is trying to do is also to use that opportunity to reinflate the economy as well. Because at the end of the day, if the 5,000 naira gets to their hands, this uh, very poor people or so-called poor people, they will still spend it within the economy and then it will drive some uh, form of commercial activity. But I would say if I were in government shoes, uh, I would look at how best to support the transport infrastructure in the country. Mm. Lagos takes, uh, well, let's not call any state, but I'll look at how to channel, support the infrastructure within, within states and the, the country, either as interstate or intrastate, and also rail services. I would also look at roads. Hmm. How, how, I mean, you're going to spend 200 billion naira every month for this 5,000 naira helicopter money, as, as it's called in economy, economics. So are there roads that require critical intervention that when you do the roads, the, the transportation cost is not so significant at the end of the day, even though the fuel cost is, is high? So I, I would say let's look at that, those, those uh, schemes. Uh, but if government has decided that the best way to support or uh, reduce the pain is to give 40 million poor Nigerians 5,000 naira, it also helps the economy, but it may not be the best way uh, to, 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 to help Nigerians, given the fact that you're not going to give them this for the rest of their lives. It's just a short, it's an interim thing, depending on how much you have left in okay. the purse anyway. Thank you very much. Well, we've heard it all on a full subsidy removal. We've heard the advantages, the disadvantages, and we also uh, heard the suggestions 
to cushion the effect of uh, the fuel subsidy. This is where we wrap it up on the program today. But just before we go, we'd like to thank Odion Omofoma, energy expert and CEO New Hampshire Group. Thank you for your insight. Thank you very much for having me. Also in the studio, we have public affairs analyst Jide Ojo. Thank you for your time. Yeah, let them put my name on that list. <laughs> <laughs> I need the 5,000 as well. <laughs> I need it too. So our viewers would like to appreciate you for making our time to be it's with us on the Always program. Nigeria Today comes your way every weekday at 7.30 p.m. Don't forget, you can watch this and other editions on www.youtube.com slash ntnews24hub. I'm Lydia Odije Ochi. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Thank you.